Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's my pleasure to read uh, to you from the prologue of Dust. He leaps over two fire-painted blossoms resting on the stark cracked city pavement. Roused, these unfurl into late Christmas season orange and black butterflies that flutter into the violet shade of a smog-encrusted roadside jacaranda tree. A thrum becomes a hum, becomes thumping footsteps. And soon he is entangled in a thicket of jeers and tossed grey, black and brown stones as he flees toward a still distant night. It is said that in combat, some soldiers shoot over their enemies' heads in order to avoid killing them. Some don't even fire at all. Moses, Ebewesit, or Didi Oganda's fingers tremble on the trigger of an old shiny AK-47. He hurls the gun away with an ugh. The weapon spills across the road, a low-pitched guttural noise. From behind Odidi, a wail. Odi man, cover! Other chords of voices echo. How? There they are. Wawe, kill them. Where's he, thieves? Or did he runs? Three weeks ago, the rifle was in the hands of a minor Somali warlord turned easily based vendor of off-season Turkish designer women's wear. The ex-warlord had given Odidi the weapon as compensation for Kaimal water songs, which Odidi had sung inside the trader's shop while he was picking up lazy feminine things for Justina, his girl. Odidi's music caused wistful chirping sounds to come out of the refugee, lamentations for lost happy pastoral yesterdays. The taciturn man had approached Odidi. You sing as if you know water, he had said. I do, Odidi answered. These were our old songs. How did they find you? A visiting man. He has a name? Odidi paused. That name came with a torrent of buried history. A curt reply, Ali Dirahada. De Gaudia concluded the warlord, naming a clan. No, no, Odidi frowned at yellow, pink, black and red panties and braziers, his mind struggling. Then he said, no, a stranger of too many lands and faces. The trader leaned forward. You know the song of Komamado, the sky camel? Odidi had winked before whistling an overture. The man had pounced on nostalgia's lyrics and belted them out. They had then ventured into and mangled other water songs. An hour later, as Odidi was paying half price for Justina's free fripperies, the ex-warlord had, had muttered, wait. He leaned down, hefted up a canvas and newspaper wrapped hard four part object and closed Odidi's hand over it. From my heart, open it alone. God shield your songs and your wife. He dabbed tears off his face, partly of relief because he had also offloaded a problem. Now, Wawe, the pursuing Nairobi mob, mob howls. Odidi runs, not feeling the ground, soaring, swish, zip, pop, rattle, bullets, grunt, thud, a man falls, ratatatata, screams. Odidi runs, tears, flood, terror, rage, love, fuse, the fallen ones are his men. Guilt, fury, sorrow. Ah, the sound a captain makes when he falters and loses the team. Still, Odidi does not go for the pistol strapped to his chest. Odidi runs. Strengthening his arms, his legs, pistons, he sprints down Hale Selassie Avenue, jumps over prone carring citizens, pities them. The bullets aimed at him, raining down upon them. He runs through the stench of decay, the perfume of earth hoping for rain, habits and dreams of Nairobi's people, smoke, rot, trade, worry, residues of laughter and overbrewed ketepa tea. Odidi runs. Incantation, Justina, Justina, shelter of faith. The mob screams, Hawa, Justina, faith into sorrow, into longing. I need to go home. Wawe, the answer. Memory tricks, or did he soars into the desiccated terrains of Wathogeek, the home he had abandoned, his people reaching out for him, cowbells, bleating goats, sheep and far mountains, 
He sees Komamado, the Grand Prix family camel, dashing home from pasture. The sky of home, that endless dome, flood tied in his blood. I want to go home. Odidi lifts his feet higher, trying to fly. Odidi runs. Random humans in this slippery city of ephemeral doings crave his death. Ua! Something flutters and falls within Odidi like a startled, broken songbird. What have I ever done to them? He just wants to go home. Justina, oasis, he will cross spiderweb black roads to touch her. Odidi runs. He turns down Jogo Road and glances upward. Childhood habit born when Galgalu, the family herdsman, had told him that God was a Kuj. Eternity revealed as sky. Up there, now, orange dusk lights battler eagles. Like marable stalks, they are prophet birds. Water in his eyes. Odidi blinks away Nairobi's late day drizzle and the earth shivers behind him, a pitiful bellow, a goat protesting the injustice of a butcher's knife. Death stinks of cold emptiness. Amosh, the last of his men. Or did he gulps down vomit, tastes salt, tears in his mouth, sticky wet of hands, as if he had dipped them into blood. Was this the destination of all their wars? Shadow and regret. Stumbling, he must move. But the city, his city, has all of a sudden changed its shape and turned against him. Roads slither into hard walls. Blocks of shadows scurry away to expose his next step to ravenous, carnivorous urban trolls. Faster, Odidi runs. A whisper from his remote past, like a brush stroke on his bare back. You can't live in the songs of people who don't know your name. Odidi grabs at his throat, suffocating in a burst of fire clarity. What have I done? Odidi runs. Glimpse of his fleeting shadow's reflection on darkened glass panes. What had he done? Odidi runs. Louder. You can't live in the songs of people who don't know your name. He understands now that he must protect his family. <clears throat> Odidi runs. He must reach a stranger, stop him from boarding a flight from Heathrow to Nairobi. First, he must find the labyrinthine alleyways, his escape routes. Pounding steps behind him, sundown's cool breeze on his arm and face, a moan within his throat. Let me go home. Odidi runs. Damp fisted hands propel him forward and the city's twilight rain saturates his skin at the same time that he hears a phone melody from within his coat pocket. Cesaria Evora's Um Pincelada, his sister's calling tune. Grim grin. Only Arabel Ajanyo Ganda would phone at a time like this. If who were to answer, he predicts her first words would be, Odi, what's wrong? He would have to say, nothing, I'm taking care of it. As she, as she expected him to, and he always did. And he was. Or did he runs? Um Pinchelada plays. If he could, he would say, hello, silly. After more than 10 years of nothing, today he could tell her, I'm going home. She would laugh, and he with her. The music stops. Hello, silly. They were chance offspring of northern Kenya drylands, growing up. Odidi and Ajan had been hemmed in by the arid land geographies and essences. Freed from history and the interference of Nairobi's government, they had marveled at Anam Kaalokol, the desert lake that swallowed three rivers, the Omo, Tukwil, and the Kerio. They learned the memories of another river, the Ewasonyiro, four moody winds, the secret things of parents' fears, throbbing shades of pasts, met assorted, assorted transient souls and painted their existence on a massive canvas of glowing, rocky, heated earth upon which anything could and did happen. They mapped their earth with portions of wind, fire, sky, water and nothingness, with light, piecing tails from stones, counting footsteps etched into rocks, peering into crevices to spy on the house of red rain. 
They lived in the absence of elders afflicted with persistent memories. No one to tell the children how it had been, what it meant, how it must be seen, or even what it was. Because of this, they recreated myths of beginnings. The first Oganda was spoken into existence by flame, Odidi once told Ajan. She believed him. His sister trusted everything he said. Glimmer of a smile. Hawa! He had forgotten where he was. Odidi runs. He jumps over mud-stained, crumpled election posters entangled in rotting foliage that showed the bright face and pure white teeth of one of the presidential candidates. Teeth do not rot in the grave. Where had he read that? To his left, a plastic-choked alleyway. He ducks into it, song in his heart, a psalm of glee. This is his territory. Justina. A glance finds her among a seething mass. He knows most of them, gang associates. Justina is draped in her yellow moo with its ridiculous giant pink carnations. He adores that dress on her. He adores her. Her eyes are unusually large, luminous and hollow. Her howl fragments his heart. Who has wounded her? Who must he kill? And then flames flare from his heart's soul and engulf him. And after he screams out, he can no longer see Justina. Or did he limps? He grips his shattered right shoulder, protrusion of bone, blood trail trickle from his mouth. It is said that in the throes of battle, dying men cry out for their mothers. A Kaima, Odidi groans. She wards off ghouls and bad night entities, wrestles God, casts ancient devils into hell before their time, and kicks aside sea waves so her son will pass unhindered. A Kaima, throb in the back of Odidi's left leg, searing that eats the base of his spine, damp from his chest, and even though his leg is heavier than a tree trunk, he, carries, he tries to carry it home. He grapples with a thought that keeps sliding away. He seizes it. Justina. The finish line. He will make it because he is shifter, the winger, rugby finisher and scorer. His forwards and backs have thrown him the ball. Although they have fallen out of play, they depend on him to end the game. He is the quickest, the trickiest, the best shifter, the winger, dancing through adversaries. Before Jonah Lomu made it right to have large wingers, there was Shifter, the Kenyan winger, who carried the game into the face of opponents and who scored try after try after try while crowds chanted, Shifter, thump, thump, winger, thump, thump. And later, when he heard the Kenyan national anthem, felt it resound in his spirit, he had wept tears that traveled past his lips and reached the earth. Shifter, thump, winger, thump. Or did he hobbles to the center of a pathway, his twisted leg dragging. Warm liquid runs down, stains his trousers, leaving a visible patch. Piss out of his control. Akaima. She fixes everything. Retrieves those who belong to her. Dim shadows, like battler eagles surveying grassy plains, circle in. They herd him into a trap. A succinct ratata. Odidi's good knees give out. Good knee gives out. He crumbles exhales on a, gurg on a gurgle. It is said that when a person begins to die, all his life races past him in spaceless time and timeless space, and he can feel again only much faster and with sun-like light all he has felt before. Thank you.